Well, then open up your own wrestling organization. <laughs> Call it what? Triple what H. It? Triple H Wrestling. H-O-G. Howl Grassley. <laughs> I can't, Dude, man. Dude, I'm sad. That sounds awful. I'm fucking sad no. right now. <clears throat> that sounds terrible. So, I know you're not catching any documentaries. No. But the Mick Foley. It's anybody out TV. there who saw it, please weigh in. Uh, the Mick Foley, which, look. I'm not a fan of Mick Foley. Just never have been. I am. Right? I like Mick. I know you are. I am. Uh, Stephen Hall. I don't think he likes me or you. But no, well, that's true, too. I don't think he does. You know, that's he wouldn't even, he wouldn't even I know share, for a fact he does not like he us. He would not share his steak with us at the Jet game. No, he would not. You asked him for a piece, and he was like, all I have are plastic forks. I can't I can't cut you a slice. He was like, that was me. I'm eating shrimp. Um, anyway. <laughs> I'm like, you know Drinking what? out of Mr. Sacco? How, how many strange. times can yeah. we hear the Mick Foley story? But I got to tell you, A&E went a totally different way. Mick Foley. It was so good because, talking about his depression. Because Mick Foley is an interesting dude. That's that's all there is to it. Love him, hate him. I, I tend, you know, it's weird. Outside of how he obviously, you know, must feel about Monty and the Pharaoh, us wise asses, you know, who say whatever we want. And, you know, to him probably, disrespect the business, man. I love Mick Foley. I thought his book was awesome. But like you said, to start off this conversation, how many times can you hear the Mick Foley story? Bro, after I read his book, I've never cared to know any more. His book was fantastic. Then he wrote a second book. That was good, too. Well, I want you to, when you get a chance, if Those you watch that great. documentary, though, Have a nice day. you see a Read whole other side of Foley. Okay. And i got to tell you, very impressive. Like what, though? Tell me. Like, what did they go into that made you go, I've never seen this side of Mick? It talks what about, like, that? a lot about him growing up. Okay. A lot about That's him cool. growing up. I've seen footage cool. of him jumping off of his right. house and stuff. That's which, cool. by the way, I, cool. I'm not trying to brag, but I was telling my wife, we I did to, that shit way before. We, we did that way before. What did you say, that? Right, without including my name? You're right. What are you, we are jumped you off of our rooms many times. And we didn't have mattresses, did we? No, we had bean bags. We had stones and rocks and tree branches. No. Just going out of the ground. No. Oops, I dropped you on but my we own tree literally branch. jumped on beanbags. Like, living room beanbags. Yes. I remember the ground being very hard. And no, w when there. we jumped off the top of the house, it was off of be onto that beanbags. That was kind of crazy. No, stupid. We did super Wait a minute. Where did you get the beanbags? From the, your, your living room. You didn't steal those from Cedarhurst paper? No. Oh, Stop. I could have sworn you did. Well, wasn't it. Rosenberg chasing you down the block? Stop. Ram, my father's going to get you! And the little dog, too! <laughs> do, 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 do. You don't remember that? So they talk about Mick Foley. He doesn't Fo remember they that. They talk about what? Mick Foley growing up. <laughs> Then how he gets into wrestling yeah, and, yeah, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, how he goes to WCW, but then decides Cactus. it's just not for him. Right. And he leaves right. that contract to yeah. go to the independent. Yes. It was just very well Dude, done. And the then, hard way, man. And then really also the hard way, life yeah. after retirement. Ooh, that's going to be. Where, you know, he's depressed oh. and things like, but then how he finds stuff through Christmas and helping. That's needy. true. This he guy's got a, a good soul. Good stuff, he has man. a good soul. He does, I love the fact that he does children's books. He's, I'm sure he's got a good. Why doesn't he like Monty and a Fowl? What did you do? You know what? He gives every. I, I, I ask you, him Mick, for. Wait a minute, hold on. What? I ask him for a lousy shrimp and he won't even give it up. Dude, he We're at the jet game. We're like, yo, give us a shrimp. And he wouldn't oh. cut the, and it was like a rare fillet. Yeah. Those plastic yeah. forks and knives would have cut through. Exactly. Why didn't he give you a slice? What a piece of trash. I, I'm telling you, he's mean. <laughs> you should have thrown him in the dumpster. It could have been a dumpster match. I don't like you, Mick Foley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, what? The week before. <laughs> Boy, we told him. The week before was the Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Again, if guys, if you didn't catch that, I'm I think at the things. end of that video. Yeah. Uh, documentary when his wife tells about the time when he dies going into Arizona him not feeling well hmm. and um, this one's tough man but it was like it came on quick you know she's like I understand because he had just come from the Hall of Fame the night before mm. and uh, he's like no I, I don't feel well I need to go to the hospital mm. she says they walk out of the room and then she starts crying how she couldn't catch him Right. Because it was like a tree, oak tree. He just dropped. He just dropped. I got to tell you, man. Oh, man. That just literally oh. tore yeah, that was, um... me up. Yeah, well, his death tore everybody up. It came out of nowhere the night before he was expect accepting his nomination to the Hall of Fame. You know, his induction. <sighs> well, speaking of the Ultimate Warrior, we'll be right back if it's commercial break where... We do our little segment called Head to Head. We love doing these. Yeah. And this week, it's the Ultimate Warrior against wow. Sting. This Who's going to win this one? I do. We'll be right back. Boy, oh boy. 
M&J video games and collectibles, sport and non-sport cards, wrestling items, autographed items. We buy, sell, and trade. M&J video games and collectibles located at 1049 Queen Street, Southington, Connecticut. Call us at 1-860-479-9223 or 860-93-GAMES. M&J video games and collectibles. <laughs> oh, what's up, Mike? Hey, Jimmy, what's going on? Yeah, not that much. You know, Jimmy, I love this country. Oh. I love to buy Made in America material. And I love to buy my artwork at TAG, T-A-A-G, Made in America, 14 East Broadway, Port Jefferson, New York, 11717, the shop at the corner. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty DeFaro, only seen here out of Indie Music TV. Once again, we want to thank everybody for joining us. So, here's our segment, Head to Head. Tonight, we are going to witness the most anticipated match in the history of professional wrestling for the heavyweight championship of the world are you ready wrestling fans are you ready all right head to head the ultimate warrior versus sting Farrell, you want to read the rules, please. All right, let's take a quick refresher course out there, folks, for the old head-to-head. -head. Uh, category number one, mic skills. Come on, that's self-explanatory. Can you talk to people or can't you? Number two, mat skills. Well, think Bret Hart, I guess, or think Rob Van Dam, or think anybody who actually knows how to do a little bit more than an armbar. Yes, folks, mat skills. Number three, overall influence on the industry. Hey, what you gonna do, brother? Yeah, yeah, that, that's an influence on the industry. Uh, number four, the back of the baseball card. Oh, what's this? Fred Chicken Stanley hit 220. You can't win a World Series with Fred Chicken Stanley? You gotta have something on the back of that baseball card. And number five. Wait a minute, what did you just say? I quoted George Steinbrenner when he got them in the office after losing the 76 World Series to the Reds, and he told Billy Martin with a straight face, <laughs> Fred Chicken Stanley hit 220. You don't win a World Series with a shortstop named Fred Chicken Stanley. So they brought in Bucky Dent and the rest of the You history. are classic, bro. Anyway. You are classic. So, yeah. So on to number five. The, the category number five is the it factor. You know, like the CM Punks of the world or the Chris Jerichos or, you know, actually a couple of these guys that we got going right now. So, Mike, take it away. I have a feeling this one could get ugly, my friend. Oh, yeah. I think it already did at the diner. Come All on. All right, so exactly. <laughs> so our first contestant, the ultimate warrior. Down, 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 down. Ladies and gentlemen, the ultimate warrior, born James Brian Helwig, 1959 till, unfortunately, April 8th, 2014. Ultimate warrior, of course, most remembered for defeating Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 6, I do believe, for the world title and... Uniting and having the Intercontinental title at the same time. Of course, we also remember him tearing out and destroying Honky Tuck Man at the first oh, yes. SummerSlam in oh, 88. Yes. Ultimate Warrior, one of the all-time greats. And by the way, early reviews from the, the people watching out there, the Monty and Farrell family. <sighs> Sting looks like... Look at you, going to have to choke on that cheeseburger. I know, okay, I, I'm getting a little going. upset here. Woo! Ow, Ric Flair does that! Big deal! Contested... <laughs> Contestant number two. All righty, folks. Number two, known as the icon named Sting. American professional wrestler, actor. Hey, former bodybuilder. Wait a minute. Wasn't the Warrior also? Yeah, why didn't you say that? I don't know. Apparently, Because your already, mind is skewed. I'm already biased with my exactly, liberal with WCW opinion. Exactly. You liberal. 
Can I, can I tell you about John Tolos, you, you ignorant fool? If it wasn't from 1974, you clearly know nothing! I anyway, go home and watch 350 days. Yeah, right? well, you know I would, but I only have 349 to go. Alrighty, so, Sting, the legend, okay? And also, two different kinds of legends. We had Surfer Sting, main event, multiple-time world champion, and of course, one of my favorites, the Crow Sting, multiple, many-time world champion. I think you could count it up to, like, six WCW world titles, World Heavyweight International title, NWA World Heavyweight Championship, and then he moves over to TNA and helps Jared actually give Vince a little bit of t a tiny migraine for the next 10 years or so with the TNA World title and the first ever TNA Hall of Fame inductee. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sting. Wait a minute, that's not good. What? What did I do, do now? Do that better. Well, I thought I did that great. No, it what, should what be to... this. This is Sting! There you go. I did it when I started it. I oh, gotta do it again. Oh yeah, absolutely. I thought that was overkill. All right, so anyway. the first category, my friend, All Mike right. skills, Farrow. Right. Well, where are we? I don't know. Does that continue on the next page, or do I have to go backwards? Let's go, go backwards. The first, the first <laughs> one is Mike skills. What do you got? Mike skills. All right. Well. Okay, here's the deal. Were either one of them absolutely outstanding talkers? Not necessarily if you're talking about the world of Ric Flair or whatever, but I tend to lean towards Sting being a better talker than Ultimate Warrior. Ultimate Warrior, both of them were very excitable in their promos, and they were good at transmitting that excitement. So at least they were both able to do that well. That I'll give them. But my God, the warrior never made any sense talking about rocket ships and cosmos and yodels and ring dings. Do you remember those promos? Uh, Tasty cakes? Absolutely. And, I don't know what the hell he was talking so about. So I'm going to ask time. you this, Farrell. You know, but I'm leaning towards Sting. Okay, you so you're leaning. You will, oh, no, but, but let's discuss this. Mm -hmm. You're leaning towards Sting. Yeah. I want you to please tell me one Sting interview that you go, I There's remember the, this. As I said before, neither one of them have a I hate you Hulk Hogan moment or that doofus son in law moment from Punk. Or one of those. They don't have them. Neither How one about them. one man's heart That's beats one last beat? Died. How about one man's That's lungs the night before he died. have one last breath? That's the night before he died. That How about a, WrestleMania that's six? A very unique. The situation. Hulk Hogan rocket ship airplane no, interview. No, it's, it's not enough to give me goosebumps and go, "Oh my God, what a promo!" No. But okay, so my question to you is Overall, this: Overall, I think twenty years of Sting delivering main event promos outweighs Ultimate Warrior's ramblings. That's what I think. And there you have it. So wow. I'm leaning towards Sting. I'm going towards Warrior. All right. Wow, this is the first time we're really not agreeing well, on a certain thing. Well, how dare you? First of all, second of all, go on. Well, what, what it, it really, it doesn't matter what Monty thinks anyway. It it's the Pharaoh segment. What so. it is? <laughs> it's, it's your head. It's not Pharaoh to mirror. Okay. Pharaoh. What? So right now we're split. Okay. Matt What's skills. Fine. Whoa, Sting. He's better. Well, can you explain why? Well, because the Warrior was not a very good wrestler in the ring. I mean, he just wasn't. He, his whole gimmick was flying out to the ring and hopefully, like Goldberg, being done within a few minutes. Sting wrestled some great matches over the years. He had awesome programs with Flair. He had awesome programs with Joe in TNA. Angle in TNA. Ever see his matches with AJ in TNA? They won match of the year. So Sting could go. He's, okay, he's so Sting against least. all those guys that you mentioned. Right. Which, of all those, which was the best match that Sting had, in your opinion? Oh, man. that's a, Probably Sting's, Sting and Flair had okay. some real dandy. The Sting and Flair it doesn't beat compare Hogan to the Warrior? It of that one match, but again, the career overall, the in-ring ability. Sorry, the, the meteor in the sky does not defeat the 20 years of quality you know, that Sting put up. I'm going with Sting. Does Flair, Sting meet Honky Tonk Man... Warrior, does it have the same meaning? Not to me. But that's, that, again, it's an isolated incident. Look, I'm not taking Warrior's two matches and putting them over Sting's entire career. I'm not doing it. I'm going to go with you on this, Sting yeah. for match skills. Yeah, I'm no, going to go with I'm you. Not doing it. All I'm saying is you know, there is an argument. There is an argument just from, a, a, warrior, uh, from a, a, a Warrior fan yeah, that may you, think that. You can that. say that, but from a simple perspective of, a, of capability in the ring, Sting's better. Okay. The end. Overall influence in the industry, my friend. I go with Sting. Again, I go with Sting, you know, for multiple reasons. Sting, uh... By the way, to according to people out there, it looks like Sting is just killing it right well, now. Well, I think he should. I think uh, Sting proved on multiple occasions, and he, and he taught good lessons to people coming up. He taught that you can re reinvent yourself. Your, your career is not over when you've run the course with a gimmick. If you're truly good, you're truly, you can do something else and do it well, and, he's, and he did that. 
Henry uh, 407, Farrell's still on fire. <laughs> he was always That's why he's a, a star of the show. He was always a great company man, an excellent leader in the locker room. All the kids looked up to him, and they still do today. Also, and I said this to you in the diner, and you did agree with me on this, he has pretty much been the main event face of the one small migraine that Vince has had since Vince bought WCW and ECW. All these years, it was Sting who was in TNA. And eventually, because... Sting was in TNA, you got a guy like Kurt Angle going there. Because Sting gave TNA v validity, you had young guys like Joe and AJ grooming great careers under that company's watch because of an icon and a face of a company like a Sting. And now here's Sting again, 20 years after Vince has won the war, wrestling in AEW. Sting's impact behind the scenes compared to Warrior, who taught wrestlers how not to behave, to not hold Vince McMahon, up, to not hold the promoter up right before you're going to do a match and say, give me so-and-so money or I'm not doing it, okay? To never, ever seem to care about the business and come across that way. I am not trying to bash the Ultimate Warrior. I don't have to. The story speaks for itself. So that's, that's the deal with that. The greater impact behind the scenes and to wrestlers today who look up and want to be like someone, take a look at Darby Allen. The winner of this category, in my mind, is Sting. All right. So I'm going to weigh in on this. Yeah. So... I heard everything you said. Mm -hmm. So, if there was an ultimate um, enemy, maybe it's the word, or uh, give me another wrestle terminolo not terminology on it, but mm -hmm. a Vince problem. Okay, yes, yeah, Sting was that main guy that hung around long enough. Mm -hmm. Here's my issue: Sting was never the man, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. The whole time, his 20-year career, mm -hmm. he was never the man. Right. I can see that. I felt that the Ultimate Warrior, in his short stint, he was he for about a year had so much more one year. influence on his industry. I don't believe that than Sting. Second. You give some valid points. Tenure, yeah. no. length. Warrior did not leave the influence on this business that Sting has, and still continues to do to this day. However, yes, it is true. For that one or so year, maybe two year period, Warrior was on top of the world, right next to Hulk Hogan, and he can say that. But again, that meteor in the sky, that Joe Namath, that came and went, does not outweigh the greatness and the longevity of Sting's career. I can't do it, and I won't. So, so to me, uh, Sting so far is three is up three to nothing. Edgel Sloan says, and this is a good point, Sting helped carry a major company through 88 through 2001. Very true. Warrior, and Warrior helped Hogan for about three years, Sting all the way. Exactly. Great comments. I, I see you're on the Farrow side. All I'm mm -hmm. saying, in my opinion, Warrior in, was great. Okay, it's influence not, on the bad. industry. Right. Warrior, in his short stint, accomplished more. And w reached greater heights than Sting ever he reached. reached did, 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 a greater height, but he didn't accomplish more as a body of work. All right, so we're split on this. So mm -hmm. right now you got Sting, three categories. Mm -hmm. It looks like a blowout. Mm -hmm. I've got Warrior two to one. Mm -hmm. Back of the baseball card. Sting. Why? Just multiple championships everywhere he went. He was also voted the greatest United States champion in the history of the belt. Uh, Henry 407 says Farrell might drop Monty. Good points as always. No, he's bigger than I am. I don't. I don't. You know. Besides, I've been reading a lot. The of reason why I watch the show. Well, that's the reason why I'm part of the show, Jimmy. <laughs> Do the mic drop? Be like, boom! <laughs> it's nothing wrong with that. Boom! Dropping the mic and dropping. Sting! It. No, boom! Me, I drop it on my foot. All right, go ahead. Where were we? Back at the baseball we card. Back, Back at the, the baseball card. Again, I just believe that it stings. Sting, stings just, you know, so many championships in multiple companies. Uh, again, the, voted the greatest United States heavyweight champion. The guy's at the top of the card for 20-plus years. So basically, yeah. Farrow is, right now has Sting 4-0. And this is this is the first and sweep this is, and this is, that's ever happened on head-to-head. -head. Well, I'm going to go with... The back of the baseball back card. Back of the baseball card, Sting, by far. Okay. okay, that's not even a competition. So I got a 2 2. You got, got on a sweep. Nothing. People are agreeing with you. All right, like, hit it me. Hit me. The What's it the it factor? Don't hit me, I mean, the it factor. The it factor. Well, folks, this is where I do change my course. The it factor is the ultimate warrior. Again, this rocket that I keep referring to that soared through the sky for those three, three or so years, 88 to 91 or so. This rocket was magnificent. This was a super freaking star. People from my job wanted to see Hogan Warrior, you know? I was actually the only one in the room that night, by the way, when the, the pink, you know, came to three and Hogan had lost the match. I was the only one that wasn't happy in that room. 
Everybody else was jumping up and down. And By the way, not to interrupt, I just got to yeah. laugh. <laughs> Modern day, modern, I know. Modern day warrior says Pharaoh must have had energy drink before all this, and I do. I wrote he had a French onion. That's soup. That's exactly what I said. He had soup. I had soup. <laughs> all right, go oh, ahead. Dude, I was go born ahead. hyper. Go ahead, brother. Oh go my ahead. God, go ahead. everybody go thinks ahead. I'm always on something, and I'm on nothing. Go ahead. This I don't mean terrible. to cut you off. You're really oh, rolling. Oh, oh, oh. You're really rolling. Uh, anyway, when when uh, WrestleMania six, when when Hogan lost the match, everybody in the room exploded. Everybody's thrilled, and I'm standing in the corner, and no one would listen to me. I says. He's not the future of this business. He's like a shooting star. He's going to come and go. I said, the real winner right there is standing right there. It's Hogan. I said, Hogan's still the face of this business. And everybody was like, oh, you're crazy, Bob. You're just mad he lost. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm like, worry is going to fade, man. And no one believed me. But, hey, history has spoken. So, so you've got it. Four to one sting. Still a blowout. Yeah. I'm going it factor with the Warrior. I've got it Warrior winning three to two, but unfortunately the rules unfortunately for me the rules state that if one overlaps the other, one has a more differential. Right. The Stings. winner is Sting. Yeah. He doesn't win by that much though. You made it closer than I did. That's well, sure. again, the fans seem to think Sting. Hey, it a lot, you know, it by a serious me doing note. It because the Warriors is a gr is a great, but I mean, you know, I just feel like Sting has the body of work. That's pretty much it. Sting I never, I, I was never a Warrior fan per se. Right, right. But I could never disregard no. what he no. did WrestleMania for six. this industry wrestlemania 6 alone is one of the great 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 moments in the history of the sport and i don't give a crap what the indie marks who hate vince's company say that is a classic forever moment and i will say that this. was a good contest if anyway. you watch if you watch the a and e documentary sting was completely different from warrior uh stim uh S steve mm -hmm. and jim were mm -hmm. two different people can you clear it up for me too because I, I was i was a little mistaken who left who in that partnership so Jim, they Ultimate were Warrior. Together. For those who don't know, in the very beginning of their careers, the Ultimate Warrior and Sting, before they were the Ultimate Warrior and Sting, were together uh, as a, as, a, as rookies coming up. So what caused their you know breaking up? So Warrior didn't like kowtowing to the older wrestlers. He felt he had his own vision. Sting wanted to just make himself, make his way through the business. So Warrior's playing individual. Warrior already, broke away. He went to WCCW, became Dingo Warrior, Texas. said goodbye, Steve. Right. Steve goes off to become Sting in WCW. Right. And they go their separate ways. Right. Um, right. Again, clearly, you know, the fans think that Sting had the better career and is the most more recognizable. Mm -hmm. um, again, for me, it's very close. I'm going with Warrior, but again, I usually defer to the Pharaoh, so I will Woo! at this point. So again, the winner is Good Sting. Contest. I hope you guys enjoyed it.